Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Splatoon 2, when played correctly, was one of the most tactical as well as precise multiplayer action games I'd actually played, and that's on any platform. It was a title that required perfect precision between you and your teammates, and if you had a group of mates, it was possibly the best online multiplayer on Switch. But we've been playing Splatoon 3. We're going to go over the single player as well as a rather painful multiplayer session and the legendary Salmon Run mode. I think we've all got a good inkling about the gameplay, and will it be a squid pro quo for existing players. Well, let's find out. Let's start out with the single player game then. This is accessed through a sewer grate in the main hub area, which I can't show you, and then you enter one of the stages. To my eye, the levels themselves are running at 60 frames per second, and upon entering a stage, you can choose your loadout with the press of a button. There are several different weapons, each with their own abilities, and they mix up the gameplay formula. Stages see you using a combination of the abilities that you'd find in the multiplayer game, such as painting the floor and sliding through it, defeating enemies, but they have more of a puzzle element. Generally, you may find yourself looking for the keys to progress while killing the enemies and using your paint to activate these. And while there's a familiarity if you've played Splatoon 2, they're certainly more refined in terms of their designs, and they do a very good job of gradually teaching the player how to play the game if they're new to the series, with a couple of simplistic environmental lateral thinking puzzles thrown in. The combat within these stages sees enemies approaching you from many different directions, and it's easy to find yourself outnumbered and out of ink, so you can't always just rush in headlong. It does feel like Nintendo are beginning to embrace speedrunners as well. There's an element of that in here, and I can see those becoming quite competitive. As far as mechanics go, well, it's quite similar. You have your motion controlled aiming, which is fantastic. You also have a secondary ability that you can fire, and it retains that balance between making sure you have enough ink to not only move, but also fire your weapon. Of the three stages that we played, I found that difficulty was right on the money, but again, it would be a perfectly fine entry point for any new players. A key point of note here then is that the single player feels like a refinement rather than a reinvention of the original game so far. It's more of what you already loved, but done better. And while it's not a final build, performance was spot on, including very reasonable load times. Artistically, it's very similar to the previous game, but there are potentially some improvements in terms of models and textures, and I thought I saw a couple of new lighting effects. In my opinion, it's a sensible decision to keep what you've got, scale it and refine it for this build, improving things that really matter, like the physics of the ink, but we'll obviously be able to go more into detail on that when the full build is released. So that single player. We will also go into handheld mode to give you some idea of how that's looking, but next up we have competitive multiplayer. Here we had two teams of four, and I am ashamed to say we were absolutely dominated. Matchmaking was interesting though, with the two teams having their own room. You could run around, have a little practice, and it was also a good place to have a look at the different weapon loadouts and customise your gear before the battle started. They've included a ready up mechanic, and it's worth noting that this is the LAN play mode. Playing through a round of turf wars feels very familiar. Both sides are presented, and off you go, trying to cover as much of the ground as you can in your colour. Now, Unfortunately, a few of the people we were playing against were absolutely amazing. <laughs> So much so that at the end of the round when I cried, wow, I think that was pretty close, I received a few sceptical looks and then I saw the map. The multiplayer gameplay is as good as I remembered it. Hopping underground, trying to use the stealth aspect to creep up on your opponents, grabbing the high ground where you can, and then just trying to get the drop on a group feels as good as ever. The levels themselves have seen a number of improvements in terms of the way that you traverse them. There's seemingly hundreds of different routes through each one, and I think existing players will have a great deal of fun learning all of them. At the end of the round, as before, you get a percentage, and it's made abundantly clear which teams won. I was kind of hoping that we would see some individualized statistics so that even if you've lost horribly you at least know how you performed but i think the emphasis is still on slick teamwork rather than going it solo after our complete annihilation we bid our opponents uh, farewell and gg and we headed to salmon run to try and make ourselves feel better 
Now, thankfully, Salmon Run isn't a time-based event like it was in the early days of Splatoon 2. This time around, you can play at any time. I was never quite sure why you could only play at certain times of the day in real world, and for me, it was quite frustrating, so this is a big improvement. If you're unaware of what Salmon Run is, it's essentially a horde mode. You'll fight off waves of enemies, and then occasionally there'll be a boss enemy who will drop an egg. The aim of the game is to get a set number of eggs into your holding area before the time runs out. You can also throw these if you're in a pinch, and it's another mode that will feel very familiar to existing players. Again, more of a refinement rather than a reinvention. You will find a few new boss enemies in here, and obviously a number of new stages. And with a good team, they're as addictive as they ever were. As you progress from one to the other, they get progressively more difficult, and at the start of each one, you're awarded a random weapon. As you can see, it looks equally nice when playing in handheld, and the gyro controls work well in this mode as well. My thoughts so far, really, are that if you're an existing fan of Splatoon 2, you're going to absolutely love having more of the same, with a few refinements and tweaks to the overall formula. If you're expecting something entirely new and changed, I don't think that's Nintendo's intention here. But you've also got to remember that there are lots of aspects of the game that we weren't able to test out during our preview, so it's highly likely, particularly in the hub area, that Nintendo have a few secrets up their sleeves. But from what I've played so far, it's incredibly addictive, the controls are very tight, performance is on point, and I'd kind of forgotten just how enjoyable the multiplayer aspect is. I think the biggest change for me is the balancing between the different modes. It feels like single player, multiplayer, and salmon run all have an equal footing in terms of their position within the game, and that's only to its benefit. Obviously, it doesn't stop you focusing on one area that you like, but it means for people that prefer single player, that feels a lot more fleshed out, and for people that like salmon run, you can spend all your time there. It just makes more sense. Now, as always, I'll be manning the comments for the first few hours. If you have any questions and I'm able to answer them, uh, please pop them down there and I'll do my best to, to try and do that. A big thanks to Nintendo and to all of you. Remember, it's literally just Glenn and I, a couple of mates. We aren't a big company, so it's a real honor to be able to play games like this early. But thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel. I will leave you with some of the best Splatoon footage that I can squeeze together if you're interested in looking at that. But for everyone else, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. Guys, see ya!